Throughout American history, the destructive power of flooding has disproportionately impacted black communities. Homes have been destroyed, livelihoods lost, and lives shattered in the wake of repeated flooding events. But it's not just the natural disaster that threatens these neighborhoods. It's the insidious hand of systemic racism that wages a war against them. From being denied access to proper infrastructure and funding, to facing discrimination at every turn, the residents of black towns across America have been left vulnerable to flooding time and time again. With each devastating flood that strikes, it becomes clearer that this is not just a natural disaster. It's a man-made crisis born out of the centuries-old legacy of racism and inequality. Welcome to yet another great video regarding the history of black people. Here, we highlight the historical existence of black people and their contributions to global civilization. In today's video, we will delve into the disturbing history of flooding in black towns, uncover the injustices and atrocities that have been committed against these communities, and examine the ongoing fight for justice and equality in the face of this ongoing crisis. In the 19th and 20th centuries, the construction of dams and levees along rivers and other water bodies was meant to protect American towns and cities from flooding. However, these engineering projects were not always implemented fairly. They frequently disregarded the interests of minority populations, especially black residents, and resulted in the flooding of their towns. Black towns are communities in the United States that have a predominantly African-American population and were formed in the late 19th and early 20th century. These towns were established by black residents who sought freedom and autonomy from white oppression after the Civil War. Many of these towns were founded after the Emancipation Proclamation in 1863, with freed slaves seeking a place to live away from white-dominated areas. Black towns also served as refugees for African Americans fleeing violence, racism, and discrimination in other parts of the country. Some of the notable black towns among the hundreds of them in the United States include Nicodemus, Kansas, Eatonville, Florida, Zion, Illinois, Mound Bayou, Mississippi, Boley, Oklahoma, Langston, Oklahoma, Allensworth, California, Hobson City, Alabama, Princeville, North Carolina, Tuskegee, Alabama, Hillside, Illinois, Timbuktu, New Jersey, Africatown, Alabama, Freemanville, Texas, Buxton, Iowa, Beachville, Nova Scotia, Gouldtown, New Jersey, Deerfield, Colorado, Lincolnville, Maine, Nicodemus, Ohio, Nicodemus, Kansas. The Flood of Nicodemus, Kansas occurred in June 1935, when the river swelled to 62 feet. This event caused extreme damage to the western region of the state of Kansas. Nicodemus Township was the most affected area. Many people lost their homes, farms, and businesses. The damages were estimated to be about $200,000, and more than 500 people were forced to abandon their living quarters. There were no deaths associated with the flood of Nicodemus, but many people lost their possessions and livelihoods. It was one of the worst floods in the history of the area, and it took years to rebuild and recover from the loss. Today, the town of Nicodemus, Kansas is a national historic landmark and a testament to the resilience of the people who live there. Eatonville, Florida. In September 2004, the city of Eatonville, Florida experienced severe flooding due to Hurricane Jean. The hurricane caused widespread damage throughout Florida, with Eatonville being hit particularly hard. Many homes and businesses in Eatonville were inundated with water, and some were destroyed. The floodwaters reached as high as five feet in some areas, causing extensive damage to infrastructure and property. Zion, Illinois. The flood of Zion, Illinois occurred in July 2017, when the Days Plains River overflowed due to heavy rainfall. This flood affected several communities in Lake County, including Zion. It was the second most severe flood in the area's history, with water levels reaching over 11 feet above flood stage. The flood caused extensive damage to homes and businesses in the area, with many residents having to evacuate the affected areas. The city of Zion also declared a state of emergency due to the flood. The floodwaters flooded several major roads leading up to the city, making transportation difficult. The flooding damaged more than 200 homes and caused over $13 million in damages. Despite the significant damage that the flood caused, 
no injuries or fatalities were reported in the Zion area. One of the primary reasons why black towns were flooded is rooted in racism. Some of these towns were developed on unwanted land and were considered dispensable by the white authorities responsible for determining water management policies. In addition, the areas that were seen as more valuable and important were given priority in terms of resources and flood protection. The Great Mississippi River flood, however, belongs under a separate category because of its long-lasting effects. Nearly 640,000 people were forced to leave their homes after the storm overwhelmed 16 million acres of land in states from Illinois to Louisiana. The Mississippi River widened to an 80-mile width in Vicksburg. Like many other floods in American history, the Great Mississippi River flood had a disproportionately negative impact on African Americans. According to estimates, more than 500,000 of those who lost their homes were black. Many African Americans were forced out of their neighborhoods and places of employment. The railroads and plantations affected by the flood were concerned that their workers, who were evicted from their homes and lost everything, would never return. African American families made up 75% of the population and 95% of the agricultural workforce in the Delta Lowlands. Many of these workers were ensnared in systems that kept them permanently enslaved to the estates, which was even worse than sharecropping. Over 200,000 African Americans were directed into a network of refugee camps established by the American Red Cross in collaboration with the railways and plantations to keep refugees close by. The camps ranged from tolerable to appalling in terms of size and living conditions. The camps with the most satisfactory conditions were those where the local colored people had the opportunity to assist in the administration of affairs, according to the final report of the Colored Advisory Commission, established to work alongside the American Red Cross and the President's Committee on Relief Work in the Mississippi Valley Flood Disaster of 1927. The camps in Baton Rouge, Lafayette, and Natchez were deemed to be particularly good. People of color hardly participated in the activities of the colored refugees in the camps at Greenville, Sicily Island, and Opelousas. At other camps, like the one in Greenville, Mississippi, National Guard soldiers barred visitors from outside the camp as well as refugees from leaving. According to the Colored Advisory Commission, black inmates at Greenville claimed that white convicts were allowed to come and go without passes at pleasure, but that colored inmates were not afforded the same privileges. Additionally, Allegations of unfair labor practices, discrimination in food distribution, and physical treatment of individuals of color were made. Additionally, the Guard made an unofficial commitment to restore refugees to their places of employment following the disaster. The Great Migration would be hastened by thousands of African Americans eventually leaving these refugee camps or avoiding them entirely in search of new lives in northern towns and cities. The African American communities in Southeast Louisiana sustained the heaviest damage from Hurricane Katrina in 2005. Southwest Houston, where 49% of the population is non-white, was the area in Texas that sustained the highest flood damage during Hurricane Harvey in 2017. Four of the seven Katrina-related zip codes with the most expensive flood damage had populations that were at least 75% black, according to official statistics. The flooding of black towns has left an indelible mark on the lives of its residents. Besides the loss of property and infrastructure damage, people have lost their loved ones and endured trauma that lasts for generations. The floods also led to social and economic instability as residents' homes and businesses were destroyed. This history of flooding black towns is more than just a disturbing tale. It's a reminder of the ongoing struggle for environmental justice and fairness in our society. These communities have faced immense challenges and obstacles in their fight against devastating floods, and they deserve our attention and support. It's time we recognize and account for the systemic inequalities that have contributed to this history and take action to ensure a better future for all. Let us remember their stories, honor their resilience, and work towards a more equitable and just world. If you enjoyed this video, and want to see more videos on black people's history, civilization, and significance, as well as other claims for black superiority. Kindly like this video and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to enable the notification bell so that you will be notified whenever we upload new videos. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.